The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. One of the most intriguing figures of Bible prophecy is the mysterious beast of Revelation. Wielding more worldly power than any man on the planet, this individual is prophesied to conquer the globe and usher in a world order unlike any the world has ever seen before. He'll slaughter many and impose a false religion on the nations of the world and no life on earth will be unaffected by his might. Although he is very likely alive right now, most of the world will not recognize him when he arrives on the world scene. And yet the Bible plays out for us very clear signs. Join us here on Tomorrow's World where today we will show you the seven signs of the beast. Stay tuned. Greetings and welcome to Tomorrow's World. It's a delight to have you with us today, and I can hardly think of a more important topic than the one we're about to discuss in detail. Seven signs that you'll be able to use to recognize the prophetic beast of Revelation, the coming global dictator who will impact every life on the planet. Now, we'll be pressed for time on this 30-minute program to cover as much as we can, and we do have an even more detailed study guide that we're sending out completely free of charge to everyone who asked for it today. It's called The Beast of Revelation, Myth, Metaphor, or Soon-Coming Reality. We'll be showing you how to get that guide on the screen throughout the program, so be sure not to miss it. And you're going to want it. The beast of Revelation has been the subject of speculation and fantasy since the Apostle John first wrote of him in the book of Revelation almost 2,000 years ago. There, Jesus Christ gave John a vision of the future, our future, that included many exotic symbols. One of them was of a vast, terrifying beast rising up out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns. Later in the book of Revelation, there's a related vision of this beast showing it to be ridden by a woman wearing fine things and dressed in purple and scarlet. This beast, the infamous beast of Revelation, refers to a man and the government he will lead in the end times immediately before the return of Jesus Christ. He and his actions are described by many passages of prophecy in your Bible, and today, We'll put many of those passages together to list seven signs you can use to identify this beast when he arrives on the world scene. The first sign we'll consider is this. The beast will control a military, economic, and political powerhouse. Some confuse the beast of Revelation with the biblical Antichrist, but this is a confusion. While the Antichrist is a religious power, and as we'll see in a moment, it will be related to the beast, the beast of Revelation is actually a mighty political entity. We see it described in Revelation 13, where the Apostle John writes what he sees in vision. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This political entity will be empowered by the dragon, or the devil, and will be so powerful that all the world will marvel and ask, who in the world is able to make war with him? 
It will possess astonishing military capabilities, dominating the globe unlike any power the world has yet seen. The rise of this frightening military force is intimately related to the ride of the first horseman of the infamous four horsemen of the apocalypse in Revelation 6, bringing warfare of unparalleled power to the world. But the organization headed by the beast will also be a powerful economic entity. At its fall, at the return of Jesus Christ, John records that many global businessmen weep at the destruction of the beast's empire, for many will have been made rich by it. In fact, Revelation 18 lists the many goods in which this power will trade, and it includes even the bodies and souls of men. And speaking of the system behind the beast tells us that all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Yet, although it is essentially a political entity, there will be a powerful religious element. The second sign of the beast I want to highlight today is this. The beast is heavily guided and manipulated by a religious power. This will be in line with the ancient pattern of the Holy Roman Empire, where the religious pope held powerful influence over the reign of the secular Holy Roman Emperor. That isn't a coincidence, as I'll explain momentarily. Revelation 17 pictures this beast in a manner similar to Revelation 13, but with an important additional detail. Turn there to verse 3 if you have a Bible with you and read along with me, where John describes being escorted in his vision by an angel to an astonishing sight. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. This symbolic picture of a woman riding the beast represents the unholy union the beast and its empire will form with the false prophet or antichrist and its deceptive counterfeit version of Christianity. Each one will use the other for its own ends, the beast using the religion of the Antichrist to solidify his power and unify his empire, and the Antichrist using the beast's political, economic, and military might to enforce its false faith on the world and achieve its own terrifying ends. Now, if such an arrangement sounds familiar, that's because of our third sign of the beast today. The beast's empire will represent a final revival of the Roman Empire. As the Holy Roman Empire of ages past was a uniting of religious and secular powers, this new Holy Roman Empire will be the same, though far more terrifying and powerful in scope. When you put the Bible together piece by piece, as we'll illustrate for you in the chart you'll receive with today's materials, you'll see that the prophecies of Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Revelation 13, and Revelation 17 mesh together perfectly, although written centuries apart. And they tell the tale of successive revivals of the ancient Roman Empire. The most recent prophecy-fulfilling revival of that power involved two of the Axis powers of World War II, uniting Mussolini and Hitler, but the Bible promises a final terrifying revival of this ancient empire unlike anything the world has seen before. 
and it will seek to accomplish ends that will make even Hitler's Holocaust seem small by comparison. You know, I mentioned our free materials just now. Before we go too much further, let me give you a quick opportunity to request our free prophecy study guide, The Beast of Revelation, Myth, Metaphor, or Soon Coming Reality. It goes into far more detail about this prophetic figure and how he will impact life in your nation in the years just ahead of us. It also contains a fantastically detailed chart of prophetic information, all with scriptural backing, showing the course of this beast power throughout history and identifying how to find its last, ultimate rise to power in our own time. Don't forget to order it and wish you hadn't. Request your copy today. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-0531. That number again is 1-800-236-0531. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. Welcome back. In our first segment, we discussed three important signs that will allow us to recognize the coming prophesied dictator, the beast of Revelation. The next sign we can be aware of is how he ultimately gains power in the end times. The beast will be given power by ten other leaders. Speaking of the ten-horned beast seen by John in Revelation 17, the angel explained to him the meaning of the ten horns. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast." So these horns, seen by John in his vision of the beast ridden by the woman, represent political leaders in a collection of nations or organizational regions who have authority to give the beast his power. These ten rulers, or kings, should call to mind the ten toes at the bottom of the vision of Daniel chapter 2. In that chapter of the Bible, a vision of a giant statue is described, symbolizing a succession of world-ruling kingdoms from Daniel's day to ours, beginning with gold in the head at the top, symbolizing Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and ending with feet at the bottom and ten toes, composed of a mixture of iron and clay. Those feet and toes represent the final revival of the Roman Empire, the empire of the beast we are describing today. Daniel chapter 2 describes these ten toes in more detail, beginning in verse 42. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw, iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. The power we see now in the form of the often unstable European Union is the prenatal form of this coming revived Roman Empire that will one day be unleashed upon the world. And just as will be the case then, the individual powers of the European Union do not get along very well just like a mixture of iron and clay, as is prophesied. However, their nationalistic differences will be overcome through a return to the religion of Europe's roots and sheer ambition, 
to give birth to the monstrous empire of the beast. Watch for it. The next two signs of the beast are often confused, so let's consider them together. Sign number five, the beast can be known by its number, 666. And sign number six, the beast will enforce its mark on the world. Often the number 666 is called the mark of the beast, but these two prophetic descriptors, the number of the beast and the mark of the beast, are two completely different things. We read of the number of the beast in a famous passage in the book of Revelation chapter 13 and verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. There are many things to note here, but let me highlight just a few. First, we often say 666, but in the Greek, it's the number 666, not just three sixes. It also says the number must be calculated and that it will take wisdom to be able to do so. So unlike what you might see in Hollywood depictions of prophecy, it's not just some sort of tattoo on a man that looks like 666, nor is it simply some series of sixes on a barcode. It is subtly present, easy to miss, and requiring wisdom, and has to be calculated. Finally, the passage says plainly that it is the number of a man and of his name or title, the beast himself. We have done an entire program on this number, and you might want to watch that program on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. It was presented by my colleague Rod King, and you can find it on the website simply by typing 666 into the search box on the homepage. And the materials that we're sending out today go into detail concerning this number, demonstrating, for instance, how the number 666 is tied into the Roman Empire and its leadership in history, suggestive of its possible future application. But note, it will take wisdom to calculate the number. It won't be obvious, no matter what Hollywood tries to tell you. As for the next sign, the mark of the beast, that is something else entirely. We read of this mark enforced by the Antichrist through the power of the beast in Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. What is this famous mark? Why does it have to be on one's forehead or hand? What does that even mean? We'll discuss this famous mark in the next segment of the program. But before we run out of time, let me give you another opportunity to request our prophecy resource, The Beast of Revelation, Myth, Metaphor, or Soon Coming Reality. We don't charge anything, never do. All of us here behind this worldwide work simply know that the time of this man is on us today, and we want the entire world to know how to recognize him and how to resist his power and influence as soon as possible. Reading this material and reviewing this chart will enable you to see the beast of Revelation coming together in the news stories you read every day. It really is free for the asking. Just call, write, or click today. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-0531. That number again is 1-800-236-0531.
With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. Welcome back. We left off discussing our sixth sign, the infamous mark of the beast. What is that mark? Frankly, it is not at all what most people think, and it is already widely present in the world around us. God says in Revelation 14 and verse 10 that he will pour out the fullness of his wrath in the end times on those who have this mark of the beast. This itself is a clue as to the mark's identity, as the Bible makes plain that those who receive God's wrath are called the sons of disobedience. The mark of the beast is related to disobeying God's commands. We see this connection even more clearly if we note that the book of Revelation consistently speaks of symbolically having the mark of the beast on one's right hand or forehead. Why? Because God speaks of placing a mark or sign of his own authority in those same places, the hand and the forehead. We see just one example in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. The Bible is consistent. Your hand symbolizes your actions and your head, your thoughts or will. God says that our hand and forehead are to bear His mark of authority and obedience, the Ten Commandments. Taking the mark or sign of the beast means replacing devotion and obedience to God's Ten Commandments and then replacing them with obeying some command representing the beast's supposed authority. And what could that be? You really need to get our booklet for the details, but let me summarize. In God's own word, which of the Ten Commandments does He ever call a mark or sign identifying who belongs to Him? Is it the Sixth Commandment telling us not to murder? Or the Second Commandment telling us not to worship idols? God Himself tells us which commandment He uses in a singular way to identify His own faithful people. It's the fourth commandment to keep the seventh day Sabbath. We see this in Exodus 31, beginning in verse 12. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So if obeying God's fourth commandment and keeping the biblical seventh day Sabbath is a sign or mark of his faithful people, then what sort of sign or mark would ignoring that biblical command to keep Sunday be? A day which has always been a mark of Roman and pagan worship. Even the Catholic Church admits that the only day set apart by God as His mark in Scripture is the seventh day Sabbath. As Catholic Press noted as far back as August 25th, 1900, Sunday is a Catholic institution and its claims to observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. From beginning to end of Scripture, there is not a single passage that warrants the transfer of weekly public worship from the last day of the week to the first. Weekly worship on Sunday has always been a sign of the religion that dominated the pagan world of Rome and sun worship. That's why it's called Sunday. Don't take my word for this. Get our study booklet and see for yourself. 
Don't trust us. Prove it using your own Bible. Our materials will help you do that, but know this. The beast of Revelation will require Sunday observance of all who wish to buy or sell and do commerce in any way. And that brings us to the seventh and last sign of the beast that we'll discuss in today's program. The beast will persecute true Christians. Revelation 13, 7 says of the beast, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Verse 15 tells us as well that the Antichrist, using the power and authority of the beast, will cause true Christians who will not worship the beast or its image to be killed. Revelation 20 and verse 4 says Christians who will not submit to the disobedient mark of the beast will be beheaded, just as Sabbath-keeping Christians were anciently persecuted in so-called Christian Rome. And Revelation 6, 9 through 11 speak of the martyrdom to come for those who live faithfully according to God's word as opposed to man-made traditions. So what do we do about all of this? Is there anything we can do? Actually, yes, there is. And it isn't what many might think, like stocking up on food or guns and ammunition and whatnot. Not at all. No, Christians are charged by God to seek Him for their protection, to take Him seriously at what He says and trust Him with their lives. Concerning the beast of Revelation's coming reign of terror, our Savior counsels us in Luke 21, but take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The age of the beast of Revelation is coming. He's likely alive and being prepared for his prophetic role in the world right now. What are you doing to prepare for your role in the days just ahead? Getting today's free information and chart will be a helpful step, and I hope you will do that. And I hope you'll join us again next week, where Richard Ames, Gerald Weston, and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ, the good news of His coming kingdom, and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. Take care, and be sure to join us again next week right here at this same time. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.